Welcome, horror enthusiasts, to Carry On Creature Feature, where nightmares come to vacation. I'm your host, and today we delve into the twisted realms of dating horror stories that will surely make you swipe left. Get ready to witness the dark and chilling tales of true creepy dating experiences that will make you question the very essence of trust. But before we unravel these not-so-tinder narratives, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Carry On Creature Feature, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to stay updated on all things horror. Our channel thrives on your support, and by joining our community, you become part of the nightmare. Now sit back and witness the unholy, unharmony dates from hell. I never thought I'd find someone after everything that happened with Owen's mother. It had been a challenging journey, raising my son alone, watching him grow, learn, and yearning for a woman who'd be willing to share our lives. After a series of disappointing dates, I met Ivy, and everything seemed to change. Ivy was vibrant, spontaneous, and brought an exciting energy to my life. We talked for hours, laughed at each other's jokes, and our connection grew stronger with each passing day. But, as they say, all good things have a flip side. The first sign of trouble occurred when I brought Owen along for one of our dates. I spent the whole week prior psyching Owen up with the promise of watching his favorite baseball team, the Kinapolis Cannonballers. When I mentioned bringing Owen along, Ivy didn't say much, which I mistakenly took for acceptance. However, that Saturday when we met, Ivy quickly became cold and distant. My attempts to revive the evening with shopping and a stroll through downtown Kanapolis didn't seem to help. Ivy's annoyance grew with Owen's excitement during the baseball game, and eventually she stormed off before the second inning. Confused, I chalked it up to a bad day. Surprisingly, Ivy called the next day as if nothing had happened, excited about planning another date. When Owen was brought up, though, her tone changed drastically. It was a red flag, but I decided to talk to her, hoping she'd understand the importance of my son in my life. In the days that followed, Ivy surprised me by expressing her desire to be part of our family. She started making efforts with Owen, scheduling fun activities that he would enjoy. The turning point was an indoor rock climbing adventure Ivy planned, and it seemed like she was genuinely bonding with my son. At first, Owen seemed scared of the height, but Ivy climbed up a few feet and then jumped off, letting the auto belay slowly take her to the ground. With a little coaching, Owen climbed about eight feet and jumped off. A mixture of fright and wonder washed over him as he descended with a gleeful smile on his face. For those that have never been indoor rock climbing, an auto belay is basically a tension line attached to the top of the climbing wall. The clamp at the bottom allows the climbers to secure their harnesses, and when they drop from the wall, their weight triggers the auto belay to safely lower them to the floor. There's still a moment of falling before the device catches you, which can be both exhilarating and frightening for new climbers. Soon enough, Owen was climbing up the wall with Ivy next to him. The two would get to a certain height, count down from three, and jump. As we reached the climax of the rock wall adventure, Ivy climbed almost 50 feet to the top, and my anxiety grew. Owen, still learning the ropes, struggled to keep up. My heart raced as I watched Ivy move next to Owen like she had done so many times before, except this time reaching down and unhooking the clamp on Owen's harness. Unaware of Ivy's actions, Owen looked at me with a smile of enjoyment. Ivy began the countdown. Three, two, one. Panic set in and I screamed for Owen to stop. In that terrifying moment, Ivy jumped, leaving Owen hanging. I grabbed him just in time, feeling a mix of anger and relief. Once we had descended, I frantically looked for Ivy, but she'd vanished. 
Attempts to contact her were futile, and her dating profile mysteriously disappeared. I attempted to contact the police regarding the matter. However, there was little evidence that a crime had been committed, and since no one was hurt, the police wouldn't investigate. Months later, a horrifying discovery shook me to the core. While browsing Facebook, a post from my close friend Brandon revealed Ivy on a boat with his two young daughters on Lake Norman. My stomach churned as the caption read, Taking my ladies to the lake, Ivy's teaching the girls to swim. The night began innocently enough. Greg and I had been chatting on a dating site for a few weeks, and he seemed like the perfect match. Charming, witty, and with a smile that can melt any heart. After a series of successful dates, we grew more intimate, and the connection between us deepened. One day, out of the blue, Greg messaged me, asking if I could come over to his house. I felt a flutter of excitement, thinking it might be a spontaneous encounter for something more than just a casual date. I put on my best outfit and drove over to Greg's place, eager for what the night might hold. As I pulled into his driveway, I noticed that Greg's truck was nowhere to be seen. I dismissed it, thinking he might have parked it in the garage. The front door was unlocked, and I entered the house calling out for Greg. Silence echoed through the empty rooms. I wandered past the shattered remnants of framed pictures in the living area, images of Greg and his ex-wife broken on the floor chill ran down my spine, but I pressed on, curiosity driving me forward. The sounds of movement led me to the main bedroom. Inside, I found Greg's ex-wife standing there, rage burning in her eyes. Greg's computer screen displayed my dating profile, and the room was filled with the echoes of destruction as she hurtled his possessions across the bedroom. Startled, I cried out, trying to calm the situation. Hello? Are you okay? Greg's ex-wife turned towards me, hate seething in her eyes. You fucking homewrecker! I bet you came here to be a dirty whore, didn't you? I stepped back, the words stinging like venom. Suddenly, she sprinted across the bedroom, launching a vicious assault. Her blows struck my face repeatedly, my mouth filled with the metallic taste of blood. My heart pounded in fear. Panicking, I managed to fend her off temporarily by pushing her away. The woman looked at me in shock, as if the push was an added insult. Her face went red, and she charged at full speed, crashing into me with unbelievable force. I don't know how to really explain it, but for a moment, I was looking down upon myself thrown against the living room wall. But I was suddenly back in my body, as the ex-wife grabbed a handful of my hair. I'm going to kill you! You hear me, bitch? She pulled my hair tighter. Fear coursing through my veins, I summoned every ounce of strength, smashing my palm into her nose. I could hear a wet crunching sound as she released my hair. With a desperate surge, I made my way outside and into my car, trembling as I dialed the police. The ex-wife was arrested for assault and breaking into Greg's home. A subsequent investigation uncovered a loaded 38 pistol a chilling revelation of her murderous intentions toward both Greg and me. As the sirens approached, I sat in my car, shaking and battered but alive. Little did I know that behind the veneer of a charming man lay a dark and dangerous history, one that almost claimed my life. My heart raced with anticipation as I scrolled through countless dating profiles, searching for that elusive connection. After a string of disappointing dates, I stumbled upon a profile that intrigued me. Dallas, a rugged contractor with piercing blue eyes and a penchant for working out in the dimly lit embrace of nature, especially during the night. Our online conversations deepened, weaving a web of shared stories and mutual interests. The excitement within me grew, prompting me to suggest meeting in person. Dallas responded that he was currently working every night for the next two weeks, but suggested a meetup at his work site, claiming there was no supervisor for this gig. 
The night arrived and I found myself parked in front of a vacant warehouse. The feeble glow of a distant streetlight barely illuminated the area, revealing a scene reminiscent of a construction site. Nervously, I called Dallas, but the only response came in the form of a text. I'm inside the warehouse. Come inside. With a smile emoji. A quick look beyond my car revealed parked construction equipment in the adjacent alley with orange road cones and signage. This made me relax a bit, as Dallas had stated the job site was indeed a construction zone. As I cautiously stepped into the warehouse, the air grew heavy with the scent of rotten wood and mildew. My calls for Dallas echoed, unanswered through the vast emptiness. Determined, I pressed on, ready to send another text. It was then that the glow of my phone betrayed a lurking figure. A man, shovel in hand, concealed in the shadows. My scream shattered the silence and I stumbled backward towards the exit. Don't be afraid, there's no light down here, Dallas reassured me, his voice emanating from the darkness. I stopped in mid-stride, my body halfway out the door, turning back towards the darkness where Dallas had spoken. Where are you off to? Don't be afraid. I was going to show you something I found upstairs, Dallas said, his voice calm and reassuring. Uneasy, I replied. I'm sorry, I can't see very well. Could you maybe step into the light? For a moment, there was a long, silent pause, and then he stepped into the faint glow of the streetlight, revealing a chilling Halloween devil's mask that sent shivers down my spine. Fear gripped me, and I turned to flee, Dallas hot on my heels. With every ounce of strength, I sprinted out of the entryway, past my car and down an alley, the distant sounds of the city offering a glimmer of hope. Glancing back, I saw Dallas in pursuit, the devil mask still hiding his face, a hammer clutched menacingly in his hand. My lungs burned as I darted through the alley, narrowly avoiding obstacles in the dim light. Emerging on the other side, I nearly collided with a couple walking down the busy street. Dallas slowed, realizing the chase was over, and ran back down the alley. After composing myself, I reported the terrifying ordeal to the authorities. A young police officer was kind enough to drive me back to my car. When I got home, I instantly deleted my dating profile and changed all my social media to private. The next few days, I constantly was on edge, fearing that at any moment Dallas would emerge from behind a tree or inside a dark closet. A year later, the grim reality unfolded. The same man who had chased me down that alley had taken another woman's life with a hammer. The woman had met him on a dating site and agreed to meet him at a private location where she was murdered. I was the one that got away, but I wish I had done more to prevent her death. To this day, when I drive by that warehouse, I can't help but see a devil staring back at me. That concludes our bone-chilling expedition into the eerie realm of true creepy dating stories here on Carry On Creature Feature. We hope these tales have left you with a lingering sense of unease and a newfound appreciation for the darkness that can lurk behind seemingly ordinary encounters. If you've enjoyed this spine-tingling journey, make sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. Tell us about your own unsettling dating experiences or suggest themes for future episodes. Your stories might just become the next nightmare we explore on this channel.